let's start with a simple HTML file. I'm going to make a title, forms, demo, or the forms demonstration. But well, let's just say I go with demo, and then I'll start with the basic on the H1. So let's put an H1. And the thing we need to understand is that when it comes to using a form, there is what you call uh, an action and at the same time a method. So as we go along, we will be discussing more about this one. But the action is used to um, send, the, send the destination of the form. For example, you either you have there an input, uh, input name and then password and then you click submit. This is where the data will be sent to. Or the destination of the data will be sent to. Okay, so you need to understand about this one. But then again, what I'm going to discuss is on the input or the input type. So basically, if you type in input, then you will find action. Now, first, we will go with an input and then followed by a type and a name. So the type will determine what specific input type are you going to use. So the basic one is we make use of the text. Okay, we can make use of the text input. Now, if we're going to save this one, you will find a text box in your uh, web browser. So let's see. I'm going to save this one in a folder so that I'll find it easily. So make sure that you, ha you are using the proper format for an HTML, which is the .html. So I'm going to make use of a folder and then save it. Once we save our file, make sure to open it and I have a problem here which of course I have included here an input element which is not in uh, comment. So I'll put here, I'm going to erase now and then let's go back, save, make sure to save it. Save and then refresh. Okay, so I'm going to copy and paste this one. This time, I'm going to make use of a password. So passwords are very common when it comes to in inserting your own passwords in social media such as Facebook, Google, and so on and so forth. Now, if you happen to insert something on the text box, it will show a text box, a text I should say, and on the password text, uh, password input, it will show you an asterisk. So by default, the character showing on the password is already hidden okay so aside from this one you can make use of color wherein if you save this it will show you a color picker so these are very common or uncommon to use not only maybe if you are a designer definitely you make use of this color picker or the color type or the color type okay so aside from this one if you visit the uh, mozilla developer site you'll find different types of, in, of input types when it comes or make use of input types. Okay, so if you visit this one, developer.mozilla.org, you'll find a lot of, of uh, input tags or input types. Okay, so definitely try to visit this one. So this is of course a very big help for all the developers out there. So on this part, I have already searched and then on the leftmost part, and these are the sum uh, these are some of the types or these are the types that you can use on your input types. Okay, so it is very useful for you guys to understand how to use them. Alright, so this is the example. Okay, so we can make use of this or we can create this one. So definitely there are instances that you can just copy and paste this one for you guys to know how it's done but then again it's better if you're going to try it on your own okay now uh, aside from this one like I said we can make use of a different type we can make use of a wick you want to so copy and paste and then we can actually show this one in a wick or a number so let's start with a number so it will show a number And aside from this one, 
we can make use of a different one which is of course the time then shows what specific time okay so i don't actually use this one but then again like i said i will only demonstrate what is very useful for this class Another useful attribute is the placeholder. So the placeholder will show what uh, what will be the output in your text boxes or in your yeah in your text boxes. Take note: not every input types have or can be put on a placeholder. So most definitely you can make use of in text or the password, the number, and so on and so forth, but never on the color or never on the time. Okay, now I can just remove this name. So name will be discussed later on, which is of course the name of the text box that we are going to use. You can delete it if you want to. Okay, so I'll put a placeholder and then enter a number. So this will guide the user in your web pages or your website. And this is, of course, very useful for everyone. The next thing that we're going to do is to put a label on a form. So basically, we're going to start with a new HTML file. And then the same thing happens. I'm going to visit this developer Mozilla area and then I'm going to search on label. Now, on this part, you will find how to use the label and how important to use label is. Will it be on your uh, web pages or in your websites? Now, if you're going to notice the code here, the label is used differently, wherein uh, this demo will tell you on how to use the label with the use of ID, or we we'll make use of the ID, and at the same time, we are going to make use of OR. So if you notice, there is a first label and at the same time, there is also a first four. Now on this part, it is important to understand the, that this label is used for connecting your input type tag and the text itself. So if we're going to click on the names on this example for this checkbox, if we're going to click on the word or the name, it will automatically check this input type checkboxes okay so if you're going to visit this site you will find tons of uh, tags or uh, yeah tags wherein you can apply it into your html pages okay so let's create a new one so start from html and then i'm going to set the title sample labels So start from the form tag. So make sure you have to start from the form tag and then inside this form tag I'm going to make use of the input type and then I'm going to make use of text and I have to put on a placeholder. So remember placeholder are very important or very important when it comes to guiding your your um, possible user. So for put in first name and then after this one. I can put on now my label. Okay, so I'll start to input or insert now my label. So start from label tag followed by in or an attribute. So make use of the for attribute. So the for attribute will determine the name of your input tag. So make use of a first name and then I have to make sure that I have also to insert the name or the caption of this label. So I make use of, let's just say I'll put on some first name or name. Let me rather go with first name. Followed by a code. Okay, so inside your input type, make sure that you make use of the ID attribute. Okay, so the ID attribute can be placed at the beginning, the center, it could be at the back. Now make, make sure that you have to 
insert the same name as the one that you have declared in your form. Okay, so I have here first name and the ID is of course first name also. So make sure that the names are the same. So it's um, save the file. Okay, so I'm going to save the file now. So I have already saved the file. And then I'm going to remove some so that it will clear out the appearance on my screen. So I have there the name. Oops. Okay, so this is how it looks like when you make use of a label. Now, labels are very important or it is of course very important when it comes to the use of forms. Okay? Now basically, if you click on the name or the word name with a colon, what will happen is of course it will redirect it to the text box connected to it. Okay? Now for this example, I'm going to remove it or change the name of my label what will happen if even if i'm going to double click the name it will not redirect me to the text box so for this example i have it save it again and the same so if i click on the name it will redirect me um be on that text, bo uh, text box okay so aside from this one you can create another one you can insert input type and then this time we'll go with password Okay. So, password followed by the placeholder. So, let's put in some placeholder. So, that, like I said, placeholder will be the guide of the user. So, what will be there? What we're going? What are they going to do with the input type that you are showing? And followed by the label. So, let's start from the label and then make sure that you put some four. And then this time I'm going to make use of the user password. Right. And of course the caption that will appear on the label. So this time password we call it. Then like I said, make use of ID. So ID will call the, the name that you have included in your label. So for this time we make use of user password. So make sure both of the names matches. Right? It is important for you to understand that both names should match. Save the file, refresh, and then you have this simple name and password. So if I click on the password, it will redirect me. Oops, there, I think there is a problem here. So if I click on the name, it will redirect me to the first name, but this time password does not redirect me. So let's check on the spelling. Oh, I, I, we happen to make use of the if instead of the ID. Save the file, refresh, and then we have a working label so if i click on the name and I click on the password it will redirect me inside this this text boxes okay okay so let's try to separate these two uh, input types so we make use of paragraph but please make uh, take note that you should not be using this one this is just for an example on how to separate the two so the p tag is used for paragraph tag so we do not do, do this one as a practice as much as possible we make use of a div but for this example i make use of a paragraph okay so i'm going to put on the paragraph okay. as much as possible i have to fix it save the file then refresh okay so this way we have already separated the two the name and the password okay, aside from this one now, we can also make use of another way on how to code label or how to make use of this label. So another example is doing this. So it's up to you if you want to make use of the, uh, the trend or the ones that is already being worn out. So we have to make use of the label followed by the name or the caption, last name. And then you, you just need to insert or include this input type inside this label. So take note, it should be inside this label. Okay, now I'm just going to arrange it. But then again, for me, the first one is of course, the it's better than this one. So make use of the input type followed by the type. So make use of the text and then the placeholder. Okay. Placeholder. And this time will be on the last one. So I said here, uh, we're going to input or insert last name. Okay. 
So we make use of this place. Okay, so this is done. So save the file and then try to refresh it. Okay, so if you notice this one, the same thing goes with the first label and the another way on how to declare or use the label. So this is the first one and this is of course the second one. So you have it your way what to use when it comes to web development. It's up to you. Okay, 